Hey, look at this meme. What's, what's that? If you are lonely, put on a horror movie and turn out all the lights. Pretty soon it won't feel like you're alone anymore. <laughs> that's, that's good advice. Um, yeah, I have to remember that one. Here with Shore Manor coming to you live from Clarksville, Tennessee. Is it really live? Um, we're recording this, so it's it's not it's a podcast. So. Yes, but it was recorded live. Oh, okay, fair enough. Okay, I stand corrected or sit as it were. <laughs> so, anyways, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. This is Matt and Amanda here with Shore Manor, and we have decided to start a series of Halloween podcasts because we're podcast people. And one thing that we've noticed is that there aren't a lot for people who love Halloween as much as we do. It's true. We wanted a, a Halloween podcast by Halloween podcasters for Halloween podcasters, uh, also listeners. Yes. So some people call us Halloween enthusiasts, but I don't really like that term because I feel like it's an understatement. This is true. We're, we, we, we go beyond enthusiasm. Uh, what's what's the next word up from enthusiasm? Would it be a obsession? I think it would be obsession. Obsession. Mm-hmm. Okay. It sounds man. It's Halloween. It sounds like a perfume. <laughs> so we thought we would start out this very first podcast. I'd buy that perfume, by the way. Oh, yeah. would you? You want that for Christmas? Sure. Okay. So we thought that we would start out this first podcast um, by talking about our background in Halloween and why we love it as much as we do, and also talking a little bit about the Trans World Halloween Horror Attraction Show that we went to a couple of months ago. The greatest Valentine's gift of all time in the history of the universe, and that, that's not an understatement at all. Mm, but more on that in a minute. Okay. So Overstatement, first, not an overstatement. So. <laughs> first of all, I grew up loving Halloween. It was always a fun holiday. Um, my family's a very family-oriented family. We would always go trick-or-treating and then go to my grandmother's house and have dinner. And then, of course, my sister and my cousin and I, we would dump all of our candy out on the floor and trade pieces that we didn't want, we didn't like. And my love for Halloween just continued to grow over the years. Mine was similar uh, except I lived uh, in the in the town. I lived in a neighborhood uh, where there were a lot of young families, so there was a lot of trick or treating going on when I was a kid. Uh, I distinctly remember getting out and walking through the neighborhood and passing kids like every two to three minutes. Uh, crowds, single, I mean everywhere, uh, goblins, skeletons, ghosts, anything you could think of, wandering my street on Halloween night. But uh, around middle school, we moved to another neighborhood that was uh, much smaller. And all of a sudden, instead of crowds of trick-or-treaters, we started averaging maybe like uh, four per year. So uh, we kind of fell out of decorating, didn't really get into it as much. And by the time I was in high school, Halloween became uh, just a night of horror movie marathons, which uh, sadly for me wasn't that special because uh, I was already doing horror movie marathons just about every Friday night anyway. And I grew up out in the country, so my aunt lived in a neighborhood that was known for trick-or-treating, and that's where we would go. Oh, boy, was it known for trick-or-treating. It still is. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> and so, Matt and I started dating in 2009, and so most of our Halloweens, the early Halloweens, were spent at Trunk or Treat with our church. And then, actually, we did that again the first year we were married because we lived in an apartment and we couldn't really decorate and do trick-or-treating there. But by golly, we put our heart and soul into what we could decorate. The one window that faced the neighborhood, we put everything we had into that one, what, uh, three-by-three window? (laughs) If it was even that big, it was pretty pitiful, actually. (laughs) Matt's overselling it a little bit. However, if you want to see pictures to prove that I'm right... You can go to our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com slash Shore Manor, and that's S-C-H-O-R-R-M-A-N-O-R. Or you can look at it and see that I'm right, and that was a truly amazing window that we did. 
Mm, we'll see. We'll see what you guys think. Um, on our Facebook page, we have the Evolution of Shore Manor, which is our home that we do every year. You can look at um, every single year from 2012 on, because that's when we got married. This is true, and it does slowly get uh, uh, more and more impressive. I don't want to say that it's not impressive when we started, because we always uh, make the most of what we have. But uh, as we add to it each year, our uh, props and decorations, they seem to get bigger every year as well. Once we stopped only using the Dollar Tree for decorations, they <laughs> got better. Yes, um, I do get made fun of a lot because I do have like a 10, most people have like a 10 year plan for things they want to do to their house as far as home improvements go. Mine is a 10 year plan for what I want my yard to look like. <laughs> Uh, real quick though, God bless Dollar Tree because they still give us some good stuff. Yes, that's not to say that we don't get any of our props from there. We just don't get the main ones from there. That's true. Dollar Tree is really good for stuff uh, if you're planning on building something in an inexpensive way because you can get all these pieces there and then go together and put something together really impressive. So, anyways, after we moved into our house, we now live in a neighborhood where we get anywhere from 75 to 125 trick-or-treaters a year. Oh. I keep up with it every year. Yeah, that was a big shift. Yes. <laughs> um, we love it here, though. The kids love it here. And we just get more and more excited every year for Halloween. This is true. Uh, constantly adding... Uh... Uh, the two things that we added a couple years ago that I was pretty proud of, we added a Halloween projection to one of our windows. So now every year we have ghosts and witches floating around in our, our windows. Uh, and then I also added a couple of fog machines, which uh, I've had some fun with when kids get a little bit too close to some of the props. Yes, he does like to scare them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but come on, you know, whenever you see a teenager goofing around on Halloween, that you want to scare them, right? That's what you're supposed to do. So, yes, Matt likes to scare children. I prefer to keep Halloween a fun and friendly holiday for families. Um, I did end up having to chase down the little girl to give her her candy because um, she was walking up the path to our house when Matt turned on the fog machine and she just walked away all the way back to the road. <laughs> she was not even... Uh, we almost couldn't get her to take candy. She was very upset. Yeah, I do still feel kind of bad about that one, actually. <laughs> Probably not as bad as I should feel, but a little bit, so that's, that counts for something, right? So, anyways, that's a bit of a background about us and how much we love Halloween, and it just gets worse every year. Um, our neighbors hate us because I like for our house to be decorated by October 1st every year, so... I like to think that they love us, that they mm. feel inspired when they see what we do. It's more like they roll their eyes, <laughs> and what are they going to do this year looks we, across their face. We have some new neighbors this year. They haven't seen our Halloween decorations, have they? They have not. This will be an interesting year. This will be a uh, interesting nightmare for the people right next door. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'll aim the fog machine in their direction. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'll let Matt talk about the how he came up with the idea for the Trans World yes. show. Yes. Because, as I recently found out a couple of hours ago, there was more to this story than I knew about. This is just because uh, I am a consummate planner and a borderline genius. Um, I wanted to get Amanda something Halloween-related as a gift for Valentine's Day. This seemed only appropriate, giving, given her love for Halloween and mine. So, uh, as soon as Halloween was over, probably as soon as November 1st, I started looking up uh, various Halloween conventions because this seemed like a fun thing that we could do together. Uh, you know, perfect date night, right? Uh, the problem was uh, the, the ones closest to us uh, were not coinciding with our schedules. I really couldn't make that work. However, there was one, the Trans World Halloween Attraction Show in St. Louis in March that uh, worked out pretty well. And on top of that, it was right after Valentine's Day, so that could be my Valentine's gift. With this in mind, I uh, went in, I ordered our tickets. Uh, I ordered them about um, one month in advance, was it? Uh, she'll, yes, she, she should know this because least. of uh, what happened uh, later in the story. <laughs> I uh, placed the order about a month in advance. 
uh, the thing was they required an email address for both of us since we were both going to be attending. So I filled all this out, submitted our order, uh, registered us, and lo and behold, I had my tickets. My plan was to hang on to these tickets and to place them inside a, uh, a Valentine's card. And when Amanda opened it up, rather than a rose or a heart or whatever, there'd be like a cool pump, pumpkin picture along with a logo saying, hey, we're going to be going to a big Halloween convention. How cool is that? Uh, unfortunately, getting back to those emails, like I said, they uh, the moment those uh, regis- the registration went through, they sent email alerts to both of us. So I would say about 10 minutes after I registered, I got this panic-stricken text. I mean, I could just see the panic in her, her words that uh, she just got alerted that she had ordered this uh, big expensive thing and she, she swore up and down to me, I did not place this order. And uh, being the just absolutely abysmal liar that I am, uh, all I could come up with to tell her was, uh, just, just, don't worry about it. It's, it's nothing, just, just forget you saw it. Is that, was that about how, how good I did? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, hearing that, I started to wonder what this was. Yeah, she did not. She said, okay, sure, I'll forget about it. But no, she didn't. Uh, I would say at least once or twice a week there was something that would happen. She would say, oh, yeah, is that the thing I'm supposed to be forgetting about that I haven't forgotten about? I'd say, yeah, that, that's probably it. Just quit talking about it right now. <laughs> Which, of course, I did not. Of course. But uh, then finally, when uh, Valentine's Day arrived, I gave her her card, did not get a good picture of a pumpkin, but uh, the big logo of the event was inside there. And when she opened it up, I, uh, I said, yeah, you know that thing you were supposed to forget about but didn't? This is that. Happy Valentine's Day. So immediately I recognized what it was because being the Halloween enthusiast that I am, I have seen videos from these shows on YouTube a lot. Halloween obsessivist, right? Yeah, so there we go. That's right. better. Halloween obsessivist. <laughs> um, and so I was so excited and I couldn't wait to go. And I'm not going to lie, I was pretty excited as well. It's kind of a gift that also gave back. So, uh, yeah, anyway, the trip to St. Louis uh, went the way most trips do. Normally we have our uh, two-year-old son Callum with us any time we go somewhere, but uh, first off, the convention didn't allow children under 16, and second off, we kind of wanted this to be sort of a a date weekend anyway, so we dropped him off with the grandparents before going. Uh, But like I said, like most trips, uh, this one involved me driving by myself, because Amanda just uh, spent the entire trip asleep next to me. It was late. Yeah, I'm aware how late it was because I was the one driving. We and also left the Friday after school. I am a school-based speech therapist, and we left the Friday before spring break. So I was exhausted. Yeah, I was exhausted too, but I had to keep driving. I wasn't allowed to sleep. Otherwise, the trip would have ended real quick. Would have been kind of Halloweenish, though, I guess. Oh, gosh. It's <laughs> awful. Don't joke like that. Sorry. Uh, so we, we rolled into St. Louis, what, right around midnight? Does that sound about mm-hmm. accurate? Yeah. So yeah. M- midnight, pulled into our hotel, uh, headed up to bed, and uh, got up the next morning. Thankfully, the convention didn't start until 10, 10 that next day, so we got to sleep mm-hmm. in until we about 9. Like 9. So that was nice. <laughs> But then the convention, how amazing was the convention? Oh my gosh, it was just insane. It was heaven on earth for a Halloween enthusiast. Obsessivist. Obsessivist. Yes. Um, We walked in and just immediately this, of course, the center, this convention center is huge. And I mean, just everywhere you look, there's props, there's people in costumes, um, there's these major, like, constructed sets of things that you can buy. I mean, just, it was amazing. I had uh, personally seen similar things to some at comic book conventions I've gone to. Um, I've actually been to the San Diego Comic Con twice. So I was familiar with seeing a, uh, a, a big convention hall just full of props and decorations. But this was the first time I had seen one with uh, just nothing but Halloween stuff everywhere. And, like, not just little Halloween stuff, just big, incredible, Massive yeah, amazing stuff. Props. Like, there was a uh, 15-foot-tall ogre that stood up, talked, belched, and I think he farted a few times, too. So, <laughs> but in between all that, he told a few uh, creepy stories. 
I don't know that I was just as awestruck as Amanda, but I think I was close because some of these props were, were really amazing. Uh, uh, some of the best ones are in that uh, darkened section that we went into. You remember those? That was actually my favorite part. Um, there was a hearse there, an actual hearse that they had converted to where the top opened and out came a grim reaper that was life size. Oh, more holding, than that. He was ten feet tall. That thing was huge. Holding um a body and the body was life size as well. And then you could see like skeleton hands and arms trying to pull the body back into the hearse. It was amazing. Oh, it was astounding and it, it just kept getting higher and higher like every mm -hmm. point where you going. think yeah, every point we thought okay, it can't go any higher, it, it, it got higher. This thing was just that enormous. Uh another really cool thing there was that I thought was really amazing. Uh, there were a few of these that were like life-size 30-foot dragons uh flapping their wings, growling and snarling with with smoke coming out of their nostrils. Uh, perched on top of these gothic castle ruins, just such amazing stuff. And then there was this uh, another real cool one was this graveyard scene, this full set graveyard scene with skeleton grave diggers at, at work digging graves, and this uh, caretaker up front, also a skeleton, holding up a lantern. He had a top hat. He might have even had some kind of beard hanging off his skeleton jawbone. <laughs> But uh, while they're working behind him, he's just there telling stories. Uh, just oh, I as I talk about it, just it's, it's so cool, so cool. So that was definitely our favorite part. We also, while we ate lunch, ran into a couple of people from Minnesota. <laughs> this that, was entertaining, yeah. That owned several haunted attractions up there, and he asked us, "What was it?" Oh, uh, this was kind of fun to, while talking to us. I think he asked us what our favorite thing about haunted houses were or asked what... Something about what haunted drew us, houses. Whatever drew us to haunted houses. And, and Amanda just kind of shakes her head and smiles because it's almost like she knew this was coming and, and said, oh, I do not like haunted houses. I don't. And, and this guy just, he kind of tilted his head and raised his eyebrow like Mr. Spock from Star Trek and said, uh, then, like... What are you doing at a haunted house convention? <laughs> yeah, his exact words were, that's really funny that you don't like haunted houses, but you come to a haunted house convention. And I was like, I like props. If I could go through haunted houses with the lights on like we did through this whole convention, I'd be fine at a haunted house. Which, speaking of ironic and funny, though, the best part of it was where there weren't lights on. Yeah. <laughs> But there was nothing, like, scary. Like, I don't like people jumping out at me. I don't like people in my face. Um, one thing I love about Halloween is it's really what you make it. This is true. It can be horrifyingly scary, or it can be the fun side to it, more like what we do, where we go along the lines of spooky bats, um, gravestones, skeletons, spiders, that kind of thing. But not real spiders. Not real spiders, no. Because she is deathly afraid of those things. They're awful. <laughs> I don't even get, like, the fake ones that look real. Like, I def you, they're definitely fake. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to make sure she steers clear of uh, the this year's uh, Halloween expansion that I'm, I'm building right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which, ironically, was my idea to build, but anyways. How does this keep working out? <laughs> <laughs> um... So that, uh, does that cover our, our big adventure in St. Louis at the Halloween convention? Pretty much, I think so. There were several props there that we loved, but just there's no way we could afford them. No, but I had a great time getting pictures with all these uh, different people in these amazing costumes. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there was some guy, on, I don't know what he was supposed to be, but he was on stilts so that he was about 10 feet tall. Do you remember that guy? He looked like some sort of inside-out bird-looking thing. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, and then there was uh, the other guy who looked like this uh, psychedelic bodybuilder. So his, his body, his chest, uh, his muscular chest that I could only wish to like be half as chiseled as was uh, <laughs> painted all these uh, colors like a, a 70s... Uh, like a, yeah, like a hippie. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting. Yeah, but uh, no, it's a great time. And of course, all these pictures, if anybody wants to see them, are on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash Shore Manor, just in case anyone forgot. Yes, they are up. You can also see, like we said, the evolution of Shore Manor from the time that we were in the apartment all the way up through last year. 
Um, there's also pictures of my favorite place in the entire world, which is, of course, Salem, Massachusetts. Yes, we'll have to dedicate a podcast to that trip as well. We will. So that's going to conclude our first podcast. That We hope that you guys liked it. Of course, go online, check out our photos. If there's anything there that you want us to do a podcast on or you have questions about, you can comment on the pictures or you can email Matt at Matt Shore, M A T T. S-C-H-O-R-R at hotmail.com. So that I get the hate mail, not you. (laughs) You're just better at checking your email than me. Okay. So comment, ask us questions, anything like that, um, anything you want to know about. And stay tuned for our next podcast, which I'm super excited about because it is going to be our favorite Halloween movies. Oh, yes. I'm excited about this one as well. Um. We will go through our favorite ones and talk about why they're our favorite ones. And these are just the way that we really... We're always in the Halloween spirit mode, but these really get us into getting ready to decorate and celebrate Halloween. Yeah, we don't like to start too soon uh, with these, so we usually start, what, about June, July? Or November 1st, yes. Yeah, that's true, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yes, we usually do begin watching them around the end of July. Um, we do usually spend all summer working on props for the next year. We like to add something every year to our house to make it look different. Um, pretty soon we're going to have to get a new storage building because the props are slowly taking over both um, our uh, the current building we have and our house. This is true, yeah. Um, but we just, we can't stop. It makes us happy, so we live with it. Yeah, we live with it. Our neighbors live with it. Our family lives with it. And uh, yes. so far, everyone is still surviving, at least. We get some raised eyebrows, but that's about it for right now. That's okay. That just keeps it fun. So, uh, thank you again for uh, tuning in, downloading, uh, however you want to call it. I, I guess it's not tuning in with a podcast, is it? Mm, I think it works. We okay, can go with sure. it. If we can say we recorded it live, I think we can go with tuning in. Okay. Then, then thank you for tuning in. If you're listening to this in your car, uh, make sure you drive safely. <laughs> yes. And we will see you for round two. That's right. And as we like to say here at Shore Manor to everyone at home, happy, happy haunting. haunting.